Welcome to Lent Worship at Bethesda. We're glad you've come along. Come, now is the time to worship. gather in spirit and in truth in this time of worship now. Our call to worship. Here at the corner of steadfast love and faithfulness, we are called to wait. Here where time is fulfilled, where God's kingdom is near to us as our neighbor. We begin Lent with the Beloved, whose tears wash away our fears, with the God who will not let go of our hands and hearts, and our shared unison Lenten prayer of approach. God of love, as in Jesus Christ you give yourself to us, so may we give ourselves to you, living according to your holy will. Keep our hearts and feet firmly in the way where Christ leads us. Help our lips speak the truth that Christ teaches us. Fill our bodies and ourselves with the life that is Christ within us. In his holy name we pray. Amen. And our opening hymn this Lenten morning, To the Desert, Jesus Came. 113 in Voices United. Turning to being at Bethesda this morning, 
A reminder again of the Saturday possibility for uh, groups or individuals bringing things good, beautiful, and true to share on space on Saturdays. A reminder for pastoral care opportunities uh, made available through uh, myself. The council minutes being posted in the, the, the vestry. Uh, first announcement for this year uh, of our annual general meeting to happen uh, April 16th. And uh, today, a word of thanks goes to uh, Cheryl and uh, to Christine for instigating and uh, championing our roast beef fundraiser. And reminder that the pickups, now that the driveway and the sidewalk is clear, are available for, uh, for being uh, picked up later this afternoon. And so uh, with these announcements and invitations, we continue. Uh, to worship God the Father, who calls us to gather, and God the Son, who now invites us to hear the Scriptures as God's Word, living Word, read for the journey. Let us pray. Loving God, you invite us as Bethesda to come and gather, both in person and then through our YouTube channel. You invite us to be silent, to know that you are Lord this Lent and always. As we continue to gather at your invitation, your call, to the leading of your Spirit. May your scriptures as they are read and heard be taken in, be dealt with as you would have them to do, and may they be shared as the word of life. Bless our children as they also engage in faith, nurture now. In Jesus' name, amen. And uh, children and uh, Sunday school teacher, we now go down to your class. Turning to our scripture readings of this morning, we begin with the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, and verses 4 to 16. Hear God's word. Listen, Israel, Yahweh our God is the one, the only Lord. You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. Let the words I enjoin on you today stay on your heart. You shall tell them to your children, and keep on telling them when you are sitting at home, when you are out and about, when you are lying down, when you are standing up, you must fasten them on your hand as a sign and on your forehead as a headband. You must write them on the doorsteps of your house and on your gates. When the Lord has brought you into the country which he swore to your ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that he would give you with great and prosperous cities that you have not built, with houses full of good things that you have not provided, with wells that you have not dug, with vineyards and olive trees you have not planted, and then, when you have eaten as much as you want, be careful you do not forget the Lord who has brought you out of Egypt, out of the place of slavery. The Lord, your God, is the one you you must be in awe of. Him alone must you serve. He is the name by which you must swear. Do not follow other gods, gods of the peoples round and about you. For the Lord your God among you is a jealous God. The wrath of the Lord your God would blaze against you, and he would wipe out you on the face of the earth. Do not put the Lord your God to the test as you test the at Massa. And our next reading this morning is Psalm 91. You who live in the secret place of Elion, spend your nights in the shelter of Shaddai, saying to Yahweh, my refuge, my fortress, my God in whom I trust. 
He rescues you from the snare of the fowler set on destruction. He covers you with his pinions. You find shelter under his wings. His constancy and shield and protection. You need not fear the terrors of night, the arrow that flies in the daytime, the plague that starts, stalks in the darkness, the scourge that wrecks havoc at high noon. Though a thousand fall at your side, ten thousand at your right side, you yourself will remain unscathed. You have only to keep your eyes open to see how the wicked are repaid. You who say, the Lord my refuge, and make Elion your fortress, no disaster can overtake you, no plague come near your tent, for he has given his angels orders about you to guard you wherever you go. They will carry you up in their arms in case you trip over a stone. You will walk upon wild beasts and adder, and you will trample, trample young lions and snakes. Since he clings to me, I rescue him. I raise him high. Since he acknowledges my name, he calls to me and I answer him. In distress I am at his side. I rescue him and bring him honor. I shall satisfy him with long life and grant him to see my salvation. And our gospel reading this morning, again from the gospel according to Matthew, testing in the desert. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit out into the desert to be put to the test by the devil. He fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, after which he was hungry. And the tester came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to turn into loaves. But he replied, Scripture says, Human beings live not on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and set him on the parapet of the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said, throw yourselves down. For the scripture says, he has given his angels orders about you, and they will carry you in their arms in case you trip over a stone. Jesus said to him, scripture also says, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Amen. Thanks be to God for these readings from his word, and may he give us understanding and perspective to live in them and through them. Amen. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, our God, we pray. Amen. So our Lenten journey continues through ice and snow, through sunshine and cloud. <clears throat> Bethesda folks here gathered may find it interesting to know that I tried the little quiz with Ryerson folks this morning, and that, uh, that is, is Lent and this second Sunday in our Lent a second Sunday of Lent or second Sunday in Lent? They were about half and half, just like Bethesda. A reminder, again today, that the correct answer is Sunday in Lent, not Sunday of Lent. The reason being that every Sunday is a little Easter. Every Sunday is a Resurrection Sunday. Every Sunday declares the hopeful posture that we are risen in Christ. So while there are Sundays in which we gather that are in Lent, our Sundays are not tied totally to Lent. Our Sundays are tied to Easter and the Resurrection. But nevertheless, though we're not of Lent, in Lent we are and that is useful, it is an important way to remind us that we are called first and foremost to be engaged in deep spirituality as our United Church theme declares. 
as our adopted three-year program would have us to do, we seek in all of 2023 to dive deeply into, into what it means to be children of God, to know God as creator, and us as God's children. You may remember from a couple of uh, years ago, this quote by the study lead material that I was reading. The book was called Church Revitalization. In that book, the author makes this bold and unflinching statement. Here, he says, is the number one indicator of decline, if this is true for your church. Nostalgia is more prevalent than devotion. The church's history is discussed more than the Bible. The past is the hero, not Jesus. Memories of the past bring more emotion than the mission of the present. Or put another way, it's not programs, it's not resources, financial or people or building or land, but the culture, the spiritual temperature of the church that determines whether revitalization is going to take hold. It is the spiritual growth of the church and those in it, the spiritual temper temperature. Thus it is our emphasis in this year, as is always, and in Lent, is spiritual discernment and spiritual growth. There are ways that we can enter into spiritual growth through the weekly uh, mailings, there are uh, a variety of ways to do so. And at some point down the road, we'll have a Fed Talks gathering to look at the ways in which all of us together have decided to engage in Lenten study and spirituality to further this aim of the key fabric of our church being our devotion, our spiritual reality. Well, last Sunday, the first Sunday in Lent, we looked at this first temptation or testing of Christ, and through this image, we uh, came to accept and to realize and to enter into Jesus' words to the tempter, to Satan, that uh, the, the bread, while being important, is not the ultimate food of God's people. God's Word, God Himself, is what gives human beings, our core, our heartbeat, our sustenance. In the words of Jesus, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word, every spiritual motion, every heartbeat of love and grace that comes from God. Now those of you who received the weekly invitation, or if you're happening to uh, drive up Wilson Street, you'll remember seeing this image, a leap of faith. Well, I think it's fair to say that leaps of faith of many, many kinds are strongly encouraged these days. In fact, those who are risk averse are said to be out of sync with where we're moving as a quick change and quick adapting culture. We're encouraged to take leaps of faith of various kinds. Well, as much as the broader community, as broad as the broader culture, and in some significant ways, many churches even encourage these leaps of faith, Jesus, Jesus turns this leap of faith on its heels when it is presented to him in Matthew and for us this morning. The second temptation. The devil took him and took, put him, put Jesus on the parrot of the temple and said, throw yourself down. And then he quoted Psalm 91 or most of Psalm 91, some of Psalm 91. The devil says, Surely angels will bear you up and you won't be harmed. 
Well, there is a verse missing from the devil's misquoting of Psalm 91. And we'll come back to that. But what's not missing is Jesus' response. Again, as a side note, it's important to see that in this dialogue, whether it's Jesus internally or with a figure incarnating evil in the flesh or in the spirit, it's all what we do with Scripture, not simply knowing it, not simply having it as a family Bible collecting dust, not simply throwing out proof texts for this or that, hearing the overall trajectory of Scripture and discerning the Spirit of God speaking through it. Spoiler alert. This summer, I'm thinking it will return to the Psalms of summer as a way to encourage our spiritual growth in this year of spiritual, deep spirituality. One of them will be Psalm 91. The reason being that some have seen Psalm 91 in its fullness as representing a healthy and full theology. So it's kind of odd then, is it not? That we have heard Psalm 91 in part today, spoken to us not by an angel, but by a demon. That demon says to Jesus again, if, if you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from this lofty place and God won't allow you to come to any harm. Well, Jesus knew this song. Jesus knows the angels of which the tempter is speaking and responds within the book of Deuteronomy. Do not test the Lord your God. Remember the overall context of Deuteronomy. Love the Lord your God with your whole heart and soul and mind. Your whole heart and soul and mind. And do not put the Lord God to the test. For Jesus, and for us by invitation, our invitation on our journey of faith is to trust God, not to test God. Not by ignoring the truths that are round and about us, Paul counted on his Roman citizenship when he was in prison. Paul encouraged us to give a reason for the faith that was in us. And in doing so, he was singing the same song of Deuteronomy, the same song that Jewish people place, as Deuteronomy suggests, on the gateways of their homes. You are to love the Lord your God with your whole heart, soul, and mind. Do not disengage your mind when it comes to faith. There are two sides of the same God-given coin. I came across this disturbing to me image in preparation for today. No doubt you can't read the words. Here they are. Here's the declaration, accompanied by this image. Though the chasm which stretches between you seems boundless, the Savior requires that you turn from where you stand and go to Him, trusting in Him, willing yourself to make a leap of faith. Now, I don't know about you, but as I say, I found this image disturbing. I can imagine it ending in a very bad outcome. The leaping lady and the author and the developer of this image obviously failed to listen to the words of Jesus in encountering Satan by saying, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Trust, 
not testing. Jesus is present with us in our own deserts of faith and loss, of struggle and challenge. Jesus is with us, yes, as our, as our faith is stretched, even in a desert journey. Our journey at Bethesda today has been marked this week in the loss of Jean Braithwaite. To me, this represents in a very real and personalized way the overall reality of us all, like Ryer, like Bethesda at this moment, being in a desert. A desert where losses occur. As someone once said, once said after the funeral service, the loss of Jean is like the ending of an era. Losses, an individual, a sense of Bethesda security, of Bethesda wellness. But into that very sense of this loss, not just of Jean, but of Bethesda security, our Lord God comes to us and says, I am with you in that desert. I am with you as the bread of life. I am with you as the one to be trusted, not to be tested by disengaging our minds or faith or will or spirit. And another way that that image misses the point is it calls or it says to will ourselves into a leap of faith. Our theology, our experience, I would suggest, says that our faith is born and born of the Spirit. It is the Spirit who draws us into faith and who encourages us in faith, even in deserts of loss, even in deserts of insecurity, of wondering where we're going to go and how are we going to get there. The missing verse. The devil, in taking Jesus to the temp to the pinnacle of the temple, again says, throw yourself down, and starts quoting Psalm 91, surely angels will lift you up, but I think those who experienced this text as it was shared, those who gathered the scripture into canon, and I think the speaker of these words, as they are delivered, the devil or Satan himself stopped them and left them this verse of Psalm 91 on purpose. <clears throat> Turning to Psalm 91 again. The angels will gather you in their arms in case you trip over a stone. <clears throat> That's where our Matthew verse has Satan ending. But then it continues. You will walk upon wild beasts and adder. You will trample upon young lions and snakes. Perhaps as people of faith, and certainly any of our Jewish friends would know, that that verse is really the necessary conclusion to what's being stated about angels. The trampling of snakes is the hallmark of the Messiah. Representing the Messiah's overcoming the damage done by our own wills and all evil that disrupts the fabric of things good and beautiful and true in our lives. And so that is left out that is left out by Satan because I suppose any sense of Jesus' Messiahship being known and being lived out was a threat 
that he did not quite count on. Perhaps that's a threat and a promise that we don't count on. Two mountains, or two mountaintops, the pinnacle and the temple of Jer in Jerusalem, in our Matthew passage, and then the mountain of transfiguration, where Jesus' messianic, human and divine identity shines like the light that we thought about at transfiguration, and present with that light is Moses and Elijah, giving to us the truthfulness of Jesus, fulfilling the law of God, the word of God, the truth of God, the love of God, represented by Moses, who God is, and what God does, represented by Elijah, what God does to bring justice and care for the orphan. And so, Jesus, in that desert, in our desert, is with us and walks with us in loss and in presence and foremost, calling us to be people of faith and trust, not of testing, not of dangling miracles as if they were God himself, but knowing God more deeply and knowing God's love lived out in us and through us today in Lent and always. Amen. Our hymn of response as the sun with longer journey. Thank you for those memories, and may we not only hold them as memories, 
but may the faith and love carried in them carry us to deepen our awareness, our experience, and our sharing of God to be trust, t- trusted, not tested. God who comes to us even in the deserts of loss or fear or depression or sorrow, sometimes merely being a presence, sometimes bringing healing and always bringing the hope of the resurrection. In the name of Jesus who invites us to pray together, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The offered. of love and trusting faith the givers and all of us so that together as a community of faith we would be your people now and always. Amen. And our sending hymn this morning is throughout these Lenten days and nights And before singing together in the benediction, a reminder or an announcement that next Sunday when we gather, we do so in a special way to dedicate our call and response, Jacob's Ladder Quilt, our sending him throughout these Lenten days and nights. Flow through you now and always.